Hey, what's up, everyone? Thank you so much for tuning back into the podcast. I'm your host, Joe Lemon, and today's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to share an episode where someone interviewed me. So I, I did a presentation for the Euroscalers community. I mean, it was at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> and they're based out of Finland. This community, Euroscalers, helps businesses in Finland expand globally. So they have a nice government assistance program and we're talking about sales and you know innovative growth strategies for small business owners, mainly in the B2B space. So I opened up uh, a lot about how I kind of leverage the podcast content, baking this into the actual private community that I manage, as well as using it with like micro events as well, all in the hope of you know getting closer to my customers and figuring out how I can add value. So hope you guys enjoy this podcast, I open up, really get into the weeds about some of my tactics but this would be a one this is the part one of a three-part series so if you are in finland check out uh the euro skills community and connect with rasmus on linkedin i'll have both of our linkedins in the actual show notes okay let's get into it it starts off with just having an honest conversation and bring them onto the platform and the goal of the platform was to highlight them so i'm not coming on like a shot jock i'm not trying to come on and embarrass anybody or <laughs> you know make any make any bad content it's it's always just for so i can elevate them on any of my guests and so i bring them on put them on my show, email that episode out to people, to, to prospects, right? So mm -hmm. when I'm staying top of mind with the prospects, that's something that's not salesy, it's just industry related. And then I'm also following up with my existing um, clients and sending them the actual podcast as well, circling back with people and then trying to make sure that everything's good. And normally that leads to, I mean, and most of my business is referrals, like 90%. I, I do some uh, outbound campaigns, but yeah, most of my team and um, gets the majority of our business from referrals. This is the Scale with Sales podcast. Today we're joined by Joe Lemon, a successful podcaster, salesman and community builder. In this three part series, Joe and Rasmus talk about content creation, community building and sales. All right, well, it's really nice to see you. So for those who you know, don't know, uh, Joe, I think, I don't know how I caught you. Somehow you had a post about a former NFL running back that was running for the team that I supported, the Seattle Seahawks, and you had some like podcast with him. I thought that was insane. Like how you were able to talk with a former pro and not only did that guy not completely go bankrupt and, and, and crash his whole financial situation, he actually, maybe he did at first, I didn't remember. They all do. <laughs> you can pay an American football honest. player as much as you want. Give him two years, he, he'll find a way to make it disappear. <laughs> so, yeah. But he anyway started some business and was making, like he was a businessman. So I was really like, that made, made me like that guy even more, even though it's good at running with the ball as well. So somehow I found, I don't know how I found you that way. And, and then I'll be following you. And I realized you had a lot of cool stuff going on. And especially when it came to this, uh, you were able to make these events. And that's what you were posting about how you were making these small events that like for me, this sounds like black magic. Like you're getting people who want to buy from you, go to an event where they will obviously be sold to and they will go there voluntarily and then be more likely to buy because they're in that. Like, it's just insane. So, yeah, that's why that's how I like how I got interested. And then we started talking and, and now you're here. Thank you so much for having me, man. You, you know what? It, it really does become black magic over time. It, it's something that you just can't control whenever it's done proper. And I'm learning a lot about it and figuring out how to do it better. But it it, it can pay some real dividends whenever it's, it is executed in the right format. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know you're quite... What was your journey into this active... Because you're active, you have a podcast, you have LinkedIn, you're doing... And you have the events. So maybe can you go us a little bit, like a little bit through your story? Like how did you end up where you are? And then we can go talk about how to make these events work. 100%. So, so pretty much I've been in sales now for the past, honestly, I've been selling ever since I was 13 years old. I mean, uh, I started off, you know, just a guy that was always into selling. And really, my first events were back in college when I was hosting house parties. So it was something that was, I was already kind of just into being social, very social person. After college, I, I got into doing B2B sales, started off selling something boring like transportation, warehousing services, basic stuff, right? Um, things that weren't sexy. But my whole time, I was always interested in more of the healthcare space. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what always interests me. So I, I eventually, after taking some fighting and trying to really uh, work my way into the space and getting turned down a ton, uh, I got into doing medical device sales. And that's been where I've been for the past seven years. And so this, this time that I've been here, I've been looking for creative ways to go about connecting with our clients. And that's why I do the podcast. That's why I've been getting into doing hosting these events and now trying to build these online groups and communities.
Yeah. But what I mean, what got you started? Because I think most of the competition that you have, they don't do podcasts, right? No. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you know, so it's funny. I first got into podcasting because I just liked the medium. Like I, I found it back maybe. Well, I first heard about it when I was in college. So this is like 2008 or nine, and people used to just upload audios like onto URL links. It's like mm. Apple had the very first platform. It was really clunky, really boring. You had to know the exact URL to go find it, and it was a class project. So we did it, and so I was like, oh, okay, you put audio on. Didn't do anything else with that, right? Mm. <laughs> Fast forward almost like uh, almost about seven years into it, like around 2015, I found this one podcast uh, called The Combat Jack Show. Now yeah. it's a it, it's this guy who was going around throughout the hip hop industry, and just interviewing like he just interviewed like hip hop artists and had these ridiculous conversations about what they did behind the scenes, and it, you couldn't put it anywhere because it was like just crazy stuff, and it, it would never put like on you know on 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 major mm. outlets, mm. and I loved it. I loved it. Nice. Well, thank you for sharing. So yeah. let, but let, let's get into the community because everybody you got here, we are all in sales. We're all trying to sell. Like most of us have in here have successful business. Like, some of you have successful businesses. Most of you have businesses that are up and coming. Like you, so most of you, most of the people here can sustain themselves. They have a, a good pay. Many of them have good pay, but like the level is like they're they're, they're, they're not taking off yet. That's why they're here in the program, to find ways to take off in the sales. Now, I, I prioritize the classical outreach using LinkedIn and using emails primarily. That's what we mostly do. This event stuff, I think, you know, because I'm, I'm feeling it. I don't know if you feel it, but with LinkedIn, I, it scares me. It's like, I'm teaching this to everybody I meet. At some point, it will be too much. Like at some point, people will be like, I don't want to be on LinkedIn because it's like people just selling to me. I'm worried about where that tipping point happens. I don't think we're there yet, but it scares me. So these micro events feel like an, a way to get away from from this digital uh, massive. There's just so much sales and marketing going on. So uh, can you take me to what was the first? Like take me through the process how you got started and, and what you've learned on the way and what you have your best practices ended up to be at the moment. Hundred percent. I mean, and you know, it's one of those things where I'm just always trying to look for different avenues because just like you, I, I'm, I'm like okay. If I found out about it, other people are coming soon. This this channel or this medium is going to break down soon, right? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> we're all going to find where the actual goal yeah. path is, and we're just going to keep running down it until we just annoy our customers, and no one's going to be there. Um, that's my that's my concern as a business owner. That's my concern as a salesperson. And so I think that in sales, we have to kind of be we have to be we have to be risk takers. We got to be looking for innovative ways that we can f- get in front of people that's different and and real and and sets us up and really try to separate ourselves from everybody else that's doing it. So I think LinkedIn's still great. I I, mm-hmm. I use it all the time. I'm still a big believer. With that being said, I'll tell you. So when I first started doing these podcasts, now it's almost about five years ago, four or five years ago. I can't remember the exact uh, date I started or time frame, but within that era, you know, I was inviting all my actual clients and. There's something that happens when you get close to your clients, like post-sale. So not like when mm-hmm. you're trying to sell them, because there's a face that we all put it, you know, we all kind of, you know, put on to, and they come in with their face of what they're looking for and everything else. But after the, the after the actual deal is done, especially for when they buy our stuff, it's very transactional at times, and it's like a one and done. You don't have to kind of keep using it over and over mm-hmm. again, which is a horrible business model for us. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it is what it is. But so after that's done, there's no more expectation of me really kind of selling them anything else. And when I'm staying in contact, the first things they say is, wow, you know, I'm really glad that you followed up to make sure that I'm getting the most out of the product. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's a smart business strategy because, you know, a referral plays there, right? Yeah. But on the flip side, you also really learn what's important to the marketplace. And so I would invite them on to my podcast and really get to just dive into things that they cared about. And that's how I started talking to NFL players and people that are mm. just have different positions because these are the pe- these are the people that my clients treated and they mm. would refer me. So it was like an introduction to some of these thought leaders in other spaces. So, but this is all for me just starting a conversation with people that I've already done business with. Yeah. So that's really how I kind of got into just understanding what they were looking for. And then the events and the communities opened up into a whole something totally different, but that, it started with just having conversation with them post-sale. And that would mean like sending a LinkedIn message like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Or how, what was the t- touch point there? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. I have email sequences, obviously, that, that I'm using through like HubSpot. And I, I'll have a follow-up sequence within six months. And for some of the key people, and you can have a, have a dripped out, like, in, you know, almost like mm-hmm. quarterly stages. So it's not like a, I'm, I'm overloading them. 
it'll be like every 12 weeks I'm reaching out and just making sure that everything's okay, maybe dripping a little bit of value in there. And I use the podcast now as a way to add extra value because after I kind of give them all the stuff that I can, I'm like, okay, well, let me just make sure that they are just connected and they know that I'm also still connected with other thought leaders in the space. They may want some more introductions. That happens a lot of times. And I try to become like this actual bridge for them. Mm. Just think about ways that we can be value add, right? So outside the sale, we're going to add some more value to where I'm always relevant and always trying to find ways that people are like, damn, I want to keep doing business with Joe, you know, or that mm. type of setup, right? And more people should be doing business with us. And that's kind of where I try to look for those angles. But it starts off with just having an honest conversation and bring them onto the platform. And the goal of the platform was to highlight them. So I'm not coming on like a shot jock. I'm not trying to come on and embarrass anybody or, <laughs> you know, make any, make any bad content. It's, it's always just for so I can elevate them on any of my guests. And so I bring them on, put them on my show, email that episode out to people to to prospects right so mm -hmm. when i'm staying top of mind with the prospects that's something that's not salesy it's just industry related and then i'm also following up with my existing um clients and sending them back to podcasts as well circling back with people and then trying to make sure that everything's good and normally that leads to i mean and most of my business is referrals like 90 percent. i i do some outbound campaigns but yeah most of my team and gets the majority of our business from referrals that's an amazing process you got there. I'm, I'm like taking, I'm taking notes here, like in my head, like, cause it's the, the for example, it's a HubSpot for like the, and when sales is done, you just keep, keep in touch automatically. I think, cause that's what happens. I mean, most of us, like the, the worst case is like sales is done. I'm like, okay, goodbye, you know, never hear from me again. Uh, and even if I wanted to be in touch, I'm like, okay, but when do I have time to like do that? Like even it will, that. Nah. It needs to be automated. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. Like I, I sometimes think of my, I was like, oh, what did, what are those guys doing? And then life returns and I can't, yes, the thought is gone. So I think that that's really clever. And that, But how many people do you have? Like, I don't know if you can give numbers, like some ballpark that, how many people are involved in this kind of, like how, how many people are, are you already like in touch with, so to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just, just give some really rough numbers. Like, so each year I'll sell anywhere between, let's call it 40, uh, 40 to about 50 people a year. Right. Uh, and they're more so transactional B2B type of sales, right? And and that will get us into the seven figures. And I have reps up under me that I also do some numbers, some a little bit more, uh, most do a, lo mm -hmm. a lot less. So it, give or take, the actual team is going to have a good, you know, let's call it 500 sales for, for the whole year, right? And so our database is pretty, is pretty decent. And so we can have these email sequences going on nonstop throughout the actual throughout the actual year. And I try to stay in front of prospects the most. And so we'll obviously mm -hmm. dripping out this industry-based information to the prospects. But when it comes to following up with the actual current existing base, mm -hmm. like literally just making sure that they're maximizing the product that we sell, that we sold to them, I think has been one the biggest mm -hmm. strategies and, and as, as salespeople, I know this is like totally contrary and probably feels like it's not even in our scope, but to make, to make sure that our clients are successful with whatever they bought from us, especially in that B2B world, because there's probably some uh, objective <laughs> to what they're trying to accomplish with it. I mean, it, it really plays with some of the best marketing strategies out there. And so um, I'll, I'll normally double down into making sure that, hey, are you getting the results for your patient that, that we talked about? Are, mm -hmm. are you having any, like just dive right into the challenges, talk about the hard stuff, it, what's not working? Like, But if you're so, running, yeah. I hear you, but like, and I think this makes sense. And for all of us here, if we have 50 clients a year, I think that is, uh, that is numbers that most of us here are like, that would be good numbers for us, almost all here. So what if we, but if you do that for years and years, like you have hundreds of people, I wonder like if they reply, like, do you have anything else to do? Like, cause you, you know, there's gotta be like, yeah, actually no, the product's not working the way it should. Like, oh shit, like you gotta sort that out now. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and, 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 and you're absolutely right. I mean, I think uh, first and foremost, you got to have a good product, you know, because the product is bad. Boy, you start reaching out, oh, you have just signed yourself up for a whole, for a whole boatload of, of, of conversations, right? Yeah. I mean, so so I would definitely try to make, simplify the product offering. And and my whole mantra now to myself as a business owner, if I hop out of, hop out of the actual sales side, is, mm. is really just focus on one product and really get make sure that I'm doing $1 million with one product. So just trying to dial it in to whatever, you know, whatever the features or the benefits are for them mm. to make sure that it's, it is being delivered proper or to my best of my ability. You know, everybody's not going to win, but to your best. Um, so the product that we're selling is great right now. And it's helping them maximize. So I don't have a lot of back end customer service issues and I get a lot of crickets. I don't want to act like there's a, everybody's diving in. But my, sometimes if you're sending out those me emails, like crickets be fine, you know? 
100 percent. Yeah, yeah 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 no problems are uh are, are the best problems right yeah, yeah. all right but so i didn't even know we we're gonna get into this but this was really cool i didn't know that you had such a cool process you know this is really <laughs> it's really nice so so in a way like because you're focusing so heavily on well let's say the product is good you're working with a good product and let's say for sake of argument that everybody here listening has a great product so that helps and then you just make sure that the people that get it, they feel like they're 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 heard, that you care for them, like you make sure this works, like please reach out. And then you give them tidbits like this is how you can use it better. Here's somebody else who used it. He got he did this thing, it really works. It's one of my podcasts, you can listen to this episode, stuff like that. I think it's it's genius. But you use this word a uh, community. So do you like do the people know each other that that you're selling to? Normally they don't, and normally, mm. you know, what's so, you know what's so interesting about um, the space that I'm in is very, it's very fragmented. It's very um, people own their zip codes. They don't really own the the whole industry or the space, right? They're 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 focused on being great in the little small part of their of their city or their town, mm. and and so it's very fragmented. So the strangers meeting with strangers, but the the biggest thing is trying to like bridge them on one common theme. And there's a couple of ways that people go about doing this. Like, so um, it's a lot, it's much easier to do when you have a product so you can get everybody kind of geared around to maximize the actual product. And whether it's educational base or whether it's like actual technology, um, you'll see a lot of tech companies building out these communities more and more because it's just so beneficial for them, right? And and make sure that people understand how to use the proper tech and they'll use that mm. community-based uh, strategy to make sure everyone's in there, but they're meeting people and they have a chance to kind of cross-pollinate that way. So that that has been a big part of building the actual foundation for the actual um, groups is that we're all using the same technology and it's newer, so it's difficult to fully understand, but it's a way that we can at least kind of have that common ground where, where everybody can start. It makes, it makes it, because the thing is, well, sometimes we talk about uh, creating a community. I, I've, I've talked with so many people and it's like, I'd be like, okay, it's like, but why? Yeah, we want to sell more. Okay, like, but why for me to be in the community? Like if this, you have a Slack group or something, that's, I mean, the translation community equals Slack group is kind of half, that's how half of the people think. I I, right. I don't like Slack. I'm a, I'm a Slack hater. Actually, I don't like Slack. <laughs> it's too much. Not a fan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to, yeah, Marcus asked what, what tools are you going to use? But give me a sec uh, first. But I was thinking if you, if you're collected around, like, let's make the most out of this product, for example, that's why we're here. And yes, mm -hmm. I can hear it from the company, but when I hear it from like a, a peer, who's using it, like I'm getting better answers. Like I, I'd rather hear from him how he's using it than hear it from the, from the corporate directly. So then there's Always. a reason for us to collect and say, oh, I'm using it this just new weird way that the corporate never, the, the, the seller never you know, thought about. I'm using it this other way. And, and if you're not competing, like if, I mean, for example, if you say like they're in the zip codes and let's say the hospitals, they're not really, com if they're geographically apart, they don't really uh, compete. This is to share because like if they have a process that they, you know, nobody, like they're not competing with each other. Uh, so that's also really clever. So then it's, it's easier to share. Uh, yeah, man, man you're, you're, you are spot on. And, and, you know, I, I even have some slides if you guys want to see them. But, you know, I, I think that there's something that's really important to be said about making sure that the mission is top of mind for everyone, because mm -hmm. the mission really gets people out of their traditional thought process of, OK, you know, it's me versus this person or especially if it's like clients that might be doing it in the same space. But it's like you know, I kind of think about it in a couple of different tiers, like one, um, especially in sales. Right. You know, sometimes uh, when you're on your team, it's like they want to pin us versus each other. And it's like, okay, mm. who's going to be the top salesperson for the month? And yeah, of course, I get it. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, it, it, it's I get great. It. It's, keeping... Joe, it's Joe again. Okay, well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I, I, yeah. I do have to say, man, normally I am at the top and it's, it's just unfortunate for a lot of my colleagues. But, <laughs> but, that, but with that being said, <laughs> you know, that's one level of competition. We can level yeah. up to another, one more mm. notch, really. And we think about going, competing against our other, you know, vendors, other people in this, mm. in our space that are offering similar services. That's what, that's the next level up to me. But the highest mm. level of competition is when you do it because you're going against the actual overall industry or the big problem that collectively everyone's trying to solve. Mm. And so when, it, before I get into trying to build, and this is the thing that I'm learning along the way, like when I build groups now, build up different type of um, communities, they're all mm. trying to be based around what's the industry need, right? Like mm. what's the big like enemy that we're all trying to attack here and let's make that the problem right let's make mm -hmm. that the enemy so anybody that comes in here that's the mission we're trying to beat 
this issue in healthcare, right? Now, now it's the it's the it's the aspects within healthcare that are problems, and not so much just you know that my my direct competitor down the street or you know somebody else that might be in a group doing something similar, trying to steal mm-hmm. ideas from me. Yeah, mm-hmm. very nice. Thank you. That that helps. That to I uh, I haven't thought about that either. Like to bring it like to bring it up. Like why are we doing this? Like why is this product existing? What are we trying to solve? And then we can co- we can collect us, each other around that. I think that's really smart. Uh, we had a question there. Like what, what do you use any? Like how do you make this community happen? And what digital tools are you using, if any? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so, so it's funny because um how, how I first got into this too. I, you know it was my client. You know having these conversations, my client set this whole thing up for me in the beginning, and um it it was, it was I didn't see it coming. So I'll tell you exactly what happened. Um it started off with somebody that was interested and in, you know like they want some more information. I got a referral, so I get most of my business. And then this you know younger doctor I didn't think had a big following or anything. She was like, hey, you know what? Um I have a couple people in the Facebook group that would be interested in kind of buying as a group. So I'm thinking, oh, wow, I can sell this to, instead of selling one, one to one, I'll sell one to three, you know, start mm-hmm. with that. And so I was like, okay, great. I'm people in the group and I'll do some live Zoom calls and do trainings and hell, maximize my time. Let's do it. Right. And so I'm thinking five to six people are going to show up and I get there and there's like, like 20 people in the group. I was like, oh, wow, that's, that's a nice surprise. <laughs> right. Yeah. That group on Facebook, it's a private Facebook group, is now over 110 people, and they're all buyers, right? Now, if you think about this, these are people that were from another group that were only interested in my product. So there's a larger group that she was connected with that has, like I think, 20,000 people or so. She promoted it, what Mm -hmm. we were doing, to that larger group. Uh, it's all this is happening on the dark web, right? It's all happening in places that we don't have visibility to, especially as salespeople, and they want to keep us out of these places. So it, be very mindful of who knows who. You don't have no clue. Like now we're so connected on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. It's so hard to know who knows who. But this this person that I thought didn't have any real following or that big of an actual influence because she was a newer student was connected to a massive group. And she helped me build this community on Facebook. So that was the first that was the first platform to start it on. Why did she like, want to share it? Like, why would she bother? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's funny because it, it came from a very practical place. It, like, she yeah. wanted a better deal. She was like, if I get three of my colleagues to buy, then I'll get a better yeah. deal. Like, so opposed to me just buying one. And she and the, the wildest part is that she, she hasn't bought yet. But she... <laughs> This is the craziest part. But she, she would get a great deal if she ever bought something. Yeah. She's referred, she's referred easily over half a million dollars to me. Easily. Oh, wow. So and so and so like it, it, I, she hasn't bought, but <laughs> so she has already referred so many people. And I would love to give her a great deal, but I mean I can't yeah. make it free, but still, you know, she's yeah. um you just don't know who's connected to who on, on, on these darks on, on these, you know, back channels. And uh I gotta tell you, when they invited me in. So I'm the only salesperson there and they announced me as a salesperson, right? And I'm like, okay, sure. Because they know I want to yeah. go sell. But they, over time, I'm just sharing content and answering their questions, trying to be helpful, just yeah. trying to take a non-biased approach. I'm talking about my competitors in a very positive manner. I try to find the positive things of why you would actually work with them. I try to like mm-hmm. really put myself in their shoes. And I started hearing and they started opening up and just start sharing all these things about uh, my competition <laughs> yeah. in these actual forms. They were just giving away all their all their insights and all the things that they were saying about our company. So it, it's 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 really interesting to see what happens if, whenever you kind of get people comfortable just to kind of um, open up to you. So just like that, guys, it's a wrap. Thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast. As always, man, I'm going to get back into more of the regular scheduled programming, talking about things that are happening in the fitness world and how we can c- combine them with ways to improve the overall healthcare system. So, man, I got some more guests coming on. Got a part two coming up with Holger Stahl, who's the CEO of Elevation Medical. Got Brad Rowe coming on, who's one of the elite trainers when it comes to using neuromuscular re-education as well into helping build up stronger bodybuilders. So lots lots of fun conversations, lots of good content coming on the way. Man, stay tuned, subscribe, tell a friend if you found any value out of this. And let me know, did you guys enjoy this like deeper in the weed sales conversation? If so, drop it in the actual show notes, leave a review or find me on LinkedIn. Let's talk there. Okay, until next time, hopefully you guys stay phenomenal.